Hi, this is Peter. Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Cane Pole. Um, I'm going to introduce another little fishing kit that I have here. And it's not so little, but you'll see in a minute why it's not. Yes, this is a fly rod case for fly rods that were nine foot long and two piece. I had two um, scientific angler rods that matched that description. One I still have. It is a six weight fly rod. The other was a nine weight that I just never used. I got it for saltwater fishing, didn't use it. Um, I also had another um, six weight fly rod that was eight foot six. Um, my grandnephew came by the house last year and asked, do you have a fly rod that you know, you're not using? Maybe I could you know, borrow or whatever. So I gave him the eight foot six. And then knowing he lived in Florida and close to saltwater and all, I told him here, here's a saltwater rod. Why don't you take this too? Um, use it, see if you like it, and if you don't, you can return it or whatever. Don't expect to get it back, never expected to get it back. And he has used, I know the eight, the eight foot six. I do not know if he's used the nine weight or not, but it saved him from having to buy one, which is a good thing. Um, but I forgot to send him with the case. I came by this year, forgot to get him to the case. Um, I'm gonna do that. Um, this wouldn't be good for him to ride on his bike or anything anyway, and since then they have actually moved a little further away from the surf, and they've put a pond in their backyard that they're stocking with fish. So, <laughs> I got one jumping right there. Um, so he doesn't really need this. So, I thought about it, and the last vacation trip my wife and I took to the, um, table rock we um, found ourselves a little limited with just the tinkara and the pole kits I opted not to take my spinning rods I didn't want to take a whole bunch of tackle and all and I still don't want to take a whole bunch of tackle the other part is when traveling and you know putting a whole bunch of camping gear in your vehicle and all it doesn't condu it's not conducive to safety of rods I don't really have rod cases um, also, we wanted to take spinning rods with us other places we go, but we didn't want to take heavy spinning rods. We don't need our, all our heavy gear. We're not, you know, this is for trips where fishing is part of what we may be doing, but as an aside, we're doing a lot of um, traveling to state parks. Um, keep in mind, this may be altered, it may be changed, things may be added to it, stuff like that. All right, what I've done is the wife and I have two little short rods and with there being two tubes the rods fit in the tubes however the reels on the rods can't remain and still zip up in the case because they just stick down a little bit too far in the tube for the real seat. See if you look like that when the real seat's out, it will be sticking out and I'll have to pick that out of the reel. This is the wife. Like I said, it's a little short rod. Um, hers happens to be an old Bass Pro Shops crappy hole. I don't even see the, the writing is so fa faded on this one. Um, she has another one just like it in the house. Um, yeah, it says crappy spin. At any rate, it's, it's a little lightweight rod. Great little um, small water creek rod. Not, you know, not doing a whole lot. Here, let me pick up this reel. Um, not doing a whole lot of heavy fishing. It spooled up currently with two pound line. My little rod is not my my, my mini spin um, that I really like because I wanted to keep that at the house, keep that ready to use. This is something I'm going to throw in the Jeep and probably keep in the Jeep. Um, my rod's a little ugly stick. Four foot eight inches, light. Um, I've got a little reel on it, once again two pound line. It's a little heavier than her rod, but it's what I had. I actually paid $2 for this rod and reel working at a um, yard sale. 
I'm pretty happy with that. The reel of, of mine is just a little um, graphite spool, um, Shakespeare, I think. No, it's a Daiwa. It's just a little Daiwa reel. No, this is her reel. Hers is a Daiwa. <laughs> yeah, um, looking at it wrong. Mine's actually, you know, the, um, the reel that came with that rod, which would be a Shakespeare on the ugly stick. Um, like I say, like I said, they don't fit with the um, reels attached to the rods, but they will fit unattached. And zips right up in this case to protect them and keep them safe. Now, do I have any tackle with me? It has a little side pocket here, which is crammed full. Little tackle box like you've seen before, seen me have before. Two sizes of hooks, some split shots. I recently just put in some small number eight weedless hooks, a couple little strike indicators as bobbers, white beetle spin, black beetle spin, our two favorite colors, uh, an assortment of jig heads, and some white, black, and brown um, rooster tail spinners like 132nd, 116th, something like that, I'm not sure. Um, they're just the small ones. Uh, they're what I could get or in and what I have. I don't use those too often, but we're gonna try it. Um, I got some Mr. Twister curly tails for the jigs in black, white. That's not the Mr. Twister. And chartreuse. Those three colors I figured would do good. Curly tail jigs on a curly tail on a, on, on a jig head. Then I got the power bait floating three inch trout worms. Not the um, not the gulp, but the regular. And I got what's called a rainbow sparkle, which looks kind of gray. It looked kind of black in pictures, but it's more gray. And then I got a pumpkin. Um, these will be rigged up on those little um, weedless hooks in a um, wacky style. Um, keep in mind we're fishing for small fish. These are little three inch worms. Um, maybe the brim will eat it. Maybe you know, small bass and creeks and stuff. I don't know. Um, might get some more. I'm trying not to go with the um, gulp series because I found the gulps tend to um, get a little um, a little dry even when she's up like bag. I have these um, Port Co. fishing lures, little crawdads. Um, they came with some plastic worms and it's starting to sprinkle and I think I heard thunder. Uh, a couple different colors. Um, it was just something that was packed up with plastic worms. I didn't even know these were in there until I bought them. I've got these with this, with this kit. All right, I do have a bag of gulp minnows. I was wanting to try these out. Um, I found the Ziploc bags, once you open them, the liquid in here dries out, the baits dry out, and then they become hard and useless. But for a trial, this was, I think, even on sale. I have a pair of hemostats and a pair of um, nail clippers for clipping line on a lanyard. And then, I have some straws that I made up. Now, these straws have some Berkeley Gulp maggots in them. I'm testing to see if I can seal off straws, put Gulp maggots in them, and let them you know, sit for a while and they'll still be good. Now, I expect to cut one of these open, use what I use out of it, and throw it away because I don't expect to reseal it. I may try resealing it. I don't know. Um, I'm also going to add some more soft plastics as we go. Uh, this is going to end up overflowing this kit. I'm going to try and keep it small, but by the same token, I want to be able to cover all my bases. Um, I keep saying no. This is not a do-it-all kit. 
This is a fishing for small water, small creeks. We go to a state park, we find, oh, hey, yeah, I didn't know this had a fish pond. Happened. Um, you want to be able to fish. I have a carabiner clip so this can go on my belt. Or I can attach it here, but so far it still kind of fits in this pocket. It's a little snug, but it fits in the pocket. Eric, thanks for watching. If you watched this far, hope you enjoyed it.